Hey, Yay, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the Russ Family Christmas Special. <laughs> Hope y'all are ready to sing. You may not know this first song, unless you've been around for a little while. Made popular by a lady that's by the name of Evie Tornquist. And she's four feet 11, but she's going <laughs> to heaven. <laughs> but I've always liked this song, so give it, check it out. Everybody likes to take a holiday. Everybody likes to take a rest. Spending time together with the family. Sharing lots of love and happiness. Come on, ring those bells. Light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King. Born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells. Everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Everybody likes to take a holiday. Everybody likes to take a rest. Spending time together with the family. Sharing lots of love and happiness. Come on, ring those bells. Light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King. Born for you and me, come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Celebrations come because of something good, celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem, the greatest celebration of them all. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. You know, some may ask, but do we really know that December 25th is his birthday? No, we don't. Some say yes, some say no. But it doesn't matter because it's what we... The day we've chosen to honor his birthday and the day we celebrate it. That's why I personally don't get into celebrating the season. Nothing wrong with Christmas trees and sleigh bells, I guess. I've never heard sleigh bells except on movies. <laughs> or maybe in band, we did have some sleigh bells in certain songs. But you know, Jesus is the reason for the season and this is December 25th is the day we honor him who came to die that we could all be free. God. 
that had seen Hail the incarnate deity Please has been with men to dwell Gives us our Emmanuel Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all He brings Risen with healing in His wings Mount He lay His glory by Born that been no poor may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth You know, I like the old hymns, the old Vespers Christmas songs, and there's been a lot of good songs written. A lot of people like the song, Mary, Did You Know? No, I'm not going to try to sing that tonight. Number one, it's hard to play. Number one, you have to have a really, really good range. You don't know that until you try to sing it. <laughs> to sing that song, but we'll just stick to ones that I know how to play and sing. <laughs> What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet? A shepherd's watch are keeping. This, this is Christ. The King, shepherds, God, and angels sing. Age, age to bring <coughs> long, babe, the son of Mary. <coughs> Excuse me. My life's in such mean as stain where oxen's ass were feeding good Christian before sin to hear the silent word is bleeding nail spears shall pierce them through the cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him into his gold and burn pleasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings that loving hearts thrown in. Praise, raise a song on high. Virgin sings her in that manger on a lonely night in Bethlehem that he was born. Not only was he wrapped in swaddling clothes, which is literally like rags, he lied in a manger that was intended to feed cattle. But you know, 
If it had been home, there would have been midwives, there would have been family. But as far as we know, it was just the two of them. Not only were they in a stable, no midwives, no nurses, no mothers or fathers to help them. <coughs> he was born the poorest of the poor for our sake so that we become rich. Be shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world of sin and error finding, till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. Led by the light of a star sweetly gleaming, here comes the wise men from Orient land. The king of Lay from the lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need. To our weakness is no stranger. Behold your King. Slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall see. Joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Praise His name forever, His power and glory evermore. Proclaim His power and glory evermore. Thank you, Lord. 
we proclaim your glory, God. We thank you that you were born that night on a silent night with nothing around but just a few cattle and a few sheep. This is one of my favorite songs, Christmas songs of all time.
upon the midnight clear, the glorious song of all from me. on the earth good will to men from heaven's all gracious King the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing Till through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still the heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world above it. Life's crushing load, whose thorns are bending low, who toll along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now for bread and golden hours, come swiftly on on the Beyond the weary road, and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on, by prophets seen of old, when with the ever circling years shall come. The time foretold When peace shall over all the earth Its ancient splendors fling And the whole world sends back the song Which now the angels sing Still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in thy dark street shadow the everlasting light. The hopes. And fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep and angels keep their watch of wandering love. O morning stars together Proclaim the holy birth And praises sing to God the King And peace to men
Son of God himself became flesh and became one of us left his throne in heaven and left all his glory to take on the form of a human being in a lowly manger Sing it with me. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep. On the hay, the cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle. The morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with me there. Many years ago, we used to go to church with a guy. And every year, every Christmas, we would sing that song and he would say, you know, there's a different, there's a different melody to that. And I'd say, yeah, I know, I know. 
And he would say, would you sing that melody too? So this is for you, Paul. stars in the sky look down where he lay the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay there you go Paul <laughs> <laughs> Paul's one of our faithful ones that watches almost every single week he's always there if you're watching hey Paul he's watching For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace is He. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. The Father and the Prince of Peace is He. Do you know when the first time the birth of Jesus was actually mentioned in the Bible? It wasn't in the New Testament. several hundred years before Jesus was born there was a man by the name of Isaiah he was a prophet in the Old Testament and I can't remember the exact chapter that it was in it was around think, the sixth chapter or ninth chapter I think somewhere it was the around ninth there or something like that it was early in the in the, the book Isaiah is several chapters long but that was actually prophesied by him hundreds of years, hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. He prophesied that that was going to happen. And those, that particular song is, is almost word for word, um, that prophecy. Not only was Jesus the Son of God, but it was a miraculous birth. Do you realize, most of us do, those of us that have been in church at any point in time in our lives, the birth of Jesus, Mary conceived that seed in her womb from God himself. The Spirit of God overshadowed her and impregnated her with his seed. It 
wasn't a premarital thing. It was a godly, miraculous thing. And history tells us that back when Mary was, when she received that seed, she was engaged to a guy named Joseph. But Joseph knew he hadn't done anything to cause her to become pregnant. So he was faced with a decision. The girl he loved, the girl he wanted to spend his life with, was carrying someone else's baby. And back then, that was unheard of. The only time something like that happened was when it involved adultery or what it involved harlotry. Both of which were very looked down on in their culture. This young girl, Mary, was carrying the very seed of God in her body, in her womb. That was something that had never, ever, ever, ever happened before in the history of mankind. And it never happened after that. And Joseph was faced with a decision, am I going to marry her anyway in spite of? And I don't know who the father of this baby is. It caused no small stir. But one night, I'm sure Joseph was tossing and turning, trying to decide what decision he was going to make. And an angel of God appeared, which also was not very, a very common thing either. The angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph and told Joseph, that the seed that she's carrying, the baby that she's carrying, is from God himself. And don't be afraid to marry her. She's going to need your love and support. I mean, can you imagine? Back then, they married real young, so she was probably around the age of 12 or 13 years old. I mean, they married early back then. Can you imagine, ladies, parents, you're 12 or 13 year old carrying a child that was seated by God himself, something that had never been done in the history of the world? And probably history would be a little bit different if the angel had not appeared to Joseph because Joseph was an upright, right standing man, well respected in the community, as was Mary, up until that happened. They, being Jews, knew about the prophecy that Isaiah had prophesied of the coming of Jesus and how it would happen. And I'm sure when Gabriel appeared to, to Joseph, he thought about the, pro the prophecy that took place hundreds of years before. But there was a, a lot of decisions that had to be made and I'm sure they were ridiculed. I'm sure they were mocked. I'm sure they were the talk of the town back during that time. 
And there was controversy around the life of Jesus from birth to death with him. You know, we don't think about those things. We just think about, oh, this cute little baby was born in a manger and in Bethlehem and and wise men came and worshipped him and all the Christmas story that we've heard over the years. But think about what they went through to get to that point. And what they went through even after he was born. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus was the Son of God. He still is. And he's up in heaven making intercession for us right now. And one day, he's going to come back for his bride, for his church. And we're going to be forever with him. And on the day of his birth, the angels appeared to the shepherds. And they were saying, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill toward men. Can you imagine? (laughs) The shepherds are out there minding their own business on a night. They're out there taking care of the sheep. And all of a sudden, a bunch of a bunch of angelic beings. Have you seen a bunch of angelic beings appear in the sky? I haven't. But the Bible says it happened. And I think it kind of freaked them out too. But there again, they had prophecies that they could go back and think about and help them believe. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their sun above, melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away, giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Thine. 
Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Mortals, join the mighty chorus which the morning stars begin. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds men to men. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing the joy of strains. some tidings be which inspire your heavenly song Excelsis Deo just means an exceeding great joy. I believe. <laughs> I looked up lately. I think that's what it means. And I bet this is a song we all know. Amen. Sing, oh, you citizens of 
our Savior has come to the world to save us from all sins. We thank you, Jesus. just a cessation, cessation from uh, didn't say that right not just a ceasing of troubles and that will come one day when you come back and this time you're coming as king of kings and lord of lords and not as a little baby and there will be total peace on earth and we know that that day is not yet 
We hope it's soon, but we don't know when, Lord. But in the meantime, whatever we're facing today, I know this Christmas has been really, really hard on a lot of people because of storms and tornadoes and fires and lots of things going on in the world. Lord, for all those peoples that have experienced great loss, great tragedy, God, I pray that they would just experience your peace in their hearts, Lord, if they know you. And Lord, if they don't know you, I pray that you would send someone to them, Lord, to help them that does know you. Thank you, Lord. Though we may not have peace in our circumstances, we know we can have peace with you, Lord. And that Jesus, that's why you came to die. That's what the angels were singing about. On earth, peace toward men. Not the stopping of wars and troubles. Not yet. That the war was won between heaven and earth. Between God Almighty and us. For those that believed on him. There would be no more strife. No more separation. Because of sin, we'd been eternally separated from you. And nothing on our part could be done to reconcile that. But Lord, we know that by sending your Son to die in our place, you became the one-time sacrifice needed for all time, for all who would believe, so that we could truly say our our Father, Abba, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, that prayer wasn't just a ritual that we were supposed to say, but it had a lot of meaning because Jesus came to reveal the Father. That's what he said. That we could say, along with him, our Father, our Daddy. Maybe that offends you, but that's what it means. Abba, Abba Father, our Daddy. You know, Israel didn't know him in that way. They knew him as El Gavor, the mighty God. Some of them may have known him as Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. Some may have known him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Some maybe as Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Because you see, God was always revealing parts of his nature throughout the Old Testament. But the one part that had never, never been revealed was our Father. So along with Jesus, we could pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, glorious, holy be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? It means that according to other scriptures in this world, uh, in this world, I'm sorry, (laughs) according to other scriptures in the New Testament, we wrestle not against principalities and powers and rule, but, but against, we do wrestle against principalities and powers, but not kings and kingdoms of this world. My mouth is <laughs> not coming out right. We're wrestling with demons, with devils, with fallen angels who come to destroy us to get us as far away from God as possible 
to make us hate God, to bring poverty, bring sickness, to bring calamity into the world. But Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and life to the full, life more abundantly. But the thief, he said, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, so you see, we have to pray. God, let your will be done here in my life. The way it is in heaven, because see, in, in heaven there's no lack. In heaven there's no sickness. There's no weakness. God doesn't ever have a day in which he doesn't feel good. And someday we'll be with him and we'll experience that. The Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because you are our Father. Teach us to walk in your ways, that like Jesus said, for this purpose, he was manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. And what are the works of the evil one? Sickness, disease, poverty, separation from God, strife, envy, murder, all those things. Hatred, bigotry, anything evil, anything bad. Jesus came to destroy all that and reveal the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is love. John 3.16 says so. For God so loved the world that he gave, into, gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You have to believe. You have to give him your life. It's not automatic. Jesus died for everyone. We don't have to do anything but we do have to believe. We do have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Romans, Romans 10, 9 and 10, you can look it up. For with the heart, man believes, resulting in righteousness. But with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. In that same passage in Romans 10, Paul starts off talking about Israel and how his heart cries out for Israel, wishing he could be a curse for their sake. But he knows he can't be. Because he knew that most of Israel rejected Christ. They didn't see him as the savior of the world that he came to be. They were hoping for a king that would conquer their enemies. And because they didn't believe, they were cursed. And for all of those who don't believe, still, there remains a curse. Because you see, we were born under sin. We were sinners because Adam sinned. Whether you ever did anything that you would consider really, really bad or not, you were born a sinner, a condition in which you couldn't change. But Christ had to be born in the form of a man, but not having the blood of a man, because his seed wasn't from man, although Mary carried him. But his seed was from God. So he was holy. He didn't have the, corrupt, the corruptible seed, although he had a mortal body. He existed in the form of man, but being inwardly God himself. Emmanuel, God with us. So let me just encourage you today. If you've never believed on him, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Let this Christmas be the best Christmas of your entire life. But it's up to you. Nobody can make you. Nobody can force you. But I want you to know God loves you. And he gave his own son to die for you. And that's really what the Christmas message is all about. I know you may think, no, that's what Easter is about. <laughs> no, that's what Christmas was all about because that's the reason he came. He came to die. He didn't come to conquer the Romans. He didn't come 
teach us, just to show us how to live better and to get along with people. He came to become our sacrifice to die, that we might live. So I pray that you would find that life in him today if you never have. Lord Jesus, we honor you this Christmas season. We thank you for the price that you paid for our sin, for our sickness, for our disease. You paid the ultimate penalty so that none of us would have to be separated from God anymore. That we could say, Abba, Father. And Lord, I pray for all those listening that despite whatever circumstances may be going on in their lives, the tornadoes, earthquakes, the earthquake last night, lots of chaos in this world, financial hardships, sicknesses, but I pray that your peace would overwhelm them and that you would show them you're not bringing terrible things on their life, but you came to take away those, our sin and to bring us peace. And I bless you, my friend, and I pray that you have the best Christmas that you've ever had. Hopefully that you'll get to spend some time with friends or families. But remember, God loves you, and Jesus came to die for you. And that's what Christmas is all about. Be blessed. See you next week.